What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we are talking about 10 items from other Star Trek games that we'd like to see made into Star Trek Online. For the past couple of videos, we've been talking about ships from other Star Trek games that we'd like to see in Stow, but Stow isn't just about Star Trek ships. There are plenty of other items, particularly ground items, that we could easily see adapted into Star Trek Online, so let's go over a few of those. The first one is from the Star Trek Elite Force games, both the first and second one, and heads up, a lot of these are from the Elite Force games. That's right, number one is the Hazard Suit. The Hazard Suit was a special uniform designed for members of the Hazard Team, which were like an elite away team on the USS Voyager. It was yet another one of those things that Voyager had to design in order to survive in the Delta Quadrant. In Elite Force 2, after Voyager's return from the Delta Quadrant, the team would be disbanded by Starfleet and all its members assigned to other postings until Captain Picard would reorganize the team to serve on board the Enterprise. The suit itself was basically meant as a sort of in-universe explanation for some of the game's in-game features. It had things like a personal shield generator and a small pattern buffer used to store various weapons, which that was the explainer why one person could be carrying around like six different weapons at a time. But it also had a more aggressive and more high-tech look to it. Now, shield generators on the ground and being able to store multiple weapons really isn't something that's unique to Star Trek Online, but at the same time, I really want the costume for this uniform. More so the one from Elite Force 2 rather than one, but at the same time, I think it would be really cool if Stoke could make their own version of the Hazard uniform in a variant of the Odyssey uniform. Next up, also from the Elite Force games, the Infinity Modulator, aka the iMod. This was a special weapon designed by Seven of Nine in order to fight the Borg. Every time the weapon fired, it would remodulate its frequency to a completely random setting, making it impossible for the Borg to adapt to it. Now, weapons that the Borg can adapt to aren't a new thing for Star Trek Online, but they all deal physical damage. I don't think it's much of a stretch for them to introduce one that's an energy weapon as well, at least at this point, and this, I think, would be a perfect candidate. This next weapon is from Elite Force 1, the Photon Burst. The Photon Burst is basically a large rifle that shoots micro-photon torpedoes. It was basically Elite Force's version of a rocket launcher. I love the idea of this weapon just because of how absolutely ridiculous it is. I mean, we're talking about, you know, a basically a rifle that shoots antimatter weapons at your enemies. And that's insanely overpowered. You know, this is the kind of thing that we, you, you would use to uh, destroy a city. And yet here we are just, you know, destroying bugs with it and stuff in Elite Force. <laughs> Elite Force 2 had a version of this weapon they called the Quantum Burst. As you can guess by the name, it shot quantum torpedoes instead of photon torpedoes. But the look of this weapon was noticeably different, as it actually slung over your shoulder, rather than the uh, original Photon Burst, which was an actual rifle, which I think makes the original one that much more ridiculous, which is why that's the one I want in the game. Plus, I feel like the original one would be easier to animate, because, I mean, we really don't have any over-the-shoulder weapons in Star Trek Online, so that would have to be something they would have to create a whole new animation rig for, I assume. Now, weapons that shoot small Photon Torpedoes on the ground aren't a new thing to stow, but they're all kit modules. With this in stow, I'm thinking something like along the lines of the Boolean Cannon, something with a really long uh, cooldown time, but has a very powerful attack. But in this case, it would deal physical damage or kinetic damage or something like that. Now, moving on to weapons that were exclusive to Elite Force 2, first we have the Enhanced Compression Rifle. Now, what made this compression rifle enhanced in comparison to the original compression rifle is that the original one was a single shot weapon, whereas this one was an automatic weapon for the game. Its secondary fire also included a sort of grenade-like projectile that would explode. The main reason this one is here is just because I really like the look of it. This is a really cool aesthetic, I think, and it's something I think uh, Star Trek Online could really do well to adopt because, frankly, I don't like the uh, the actual 2409 issue weapons that are being used in the game, which I believe are the ones from the uh, the fleet weapons. Yeah, I, I don't like the look of those. These These are cooler. And continuing with that sentiment, we also have the Assault Rifle from Elite Force 2, which, again, basically here for the same reason. I like the aesthetic of it. This one is basically, it's a uh, it's a double barrel shotgun, but Starfleet issue. I think that's really cool. And that's how it functioned in the game as well. It was basically a shotgun weapon for Elite Force 2. Yeah, again, most of these are just here because I really like the aesthetic. Now, we got one more from Elite Force 2, and that is the Romulan Radiation Disruptor. Like the name suggests, this was an experimental weapon used by the Romulans that would also deal radiation damage as well as being a disruptor. From a Star Trek Online perspective, the options here are pretty easy. Just make a sort of disruptor weapon, give it some uh, unique firing modes, and make it a disruptor weapon with a uh, like a radiation proc along with it. These next two weapons are from a video game I actually didn't know about until I started doing research for this video, and that is from Star Trek Klingon Honor Guard. 
Klingon Underguard has a number of weapons that could be considered contemporaries to the Elite Force weapons. It's got your normal assault rifle weapon, your shotgun weapon, your rocket launcher weapon, all typical stuff you'd normally see from a 90s uh, first person shooter. Of the two I'm going to be talking about in this video, the first is called the Botch Hitch Assault Disruptor. At least I think that's how you pronounce that. It's a Klingon shotgun disruptor. That's that's really all I could say about it because that's about all it is, but I thought it looked pretty cool. The other weapon I'm going to talk about is a bit more unique. It's called the Ding Potch. This weapon is basically a wrist mounted launcher that shoots a spinning blade at a target. That, uh, that blade will stay stuck in an enemy, continuing to do damage to them and then return to the launcher. Translating this into Star Trek Online, I feel like this one is probably the only one on the list that actually works better as a kit module. Now, there are several more ground weapons from both Honor Guard and Elite Force 2 that I can bring up for this list, but honestly, I didn't feel like any of them were all that special enough, you know, at least not enough to be talking about for this list. There are other ground based Star Trek games, but not a lot of them have, uh, you know, other things that adapt well to Star Trek Online. Star Trek Away Team, for example, it doesn't really have any unique weapons. It just uses the standard Type 1 and Type 2 phasers, and everything else is more reliant on special abilities uh, to those specific units, like uh, grenades or uh, hacking abilities, Vulcan nerve pinches. These are all stuff that's already in stow that can be used with uh, existing kit modules or traits. There's also Star Trek New World, but I mean, that one's all uh, vehicle combat. It's basically a uh, Star Trek version of StarCraft. Like, it even said it on the box. It was not subtle about that fact. So I, you know, Star Trek Online doesn't do ground vehicle stuff, so I don't know how any of that could translate into stow. So for this last one, we're going to be moving back into space. Specifically, uh, this could be an idea for a space console, and that is the Chain Reaction Pulsar from Star Trek Armada. The Chain Reaction Pulsar was an ability that the Akira class ships had in Star Trek's Armada 1 and 2, and it was a projectile that would bounce from multiple targets. Uh, it would lock onto a single target, hit it, and then bounce to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and I think it only did like three or four times, but with each bounce it would gain more power. I always thought this would be a cool idea for a console in Stowe, and uh, I have been campaigning for a new version of the Akira as well, so uh, something to consider there too. Of course, I've been talking about a legendary Akira, which, uh, you know, a legendary ships don't typically come with new consoles, so they would either have to make a new console for, like, whatever bundle that ship comes with, or we're talking about a whole new version of the Akira as well, maybe like a, a Terran version, which, again, I'm not opposed to. Anyway, those are 10 items from other Star Trek games that I would like to see in Star Trek Online. If there's anything you'd like to see introduced into the stow that I didn't go over in this video, please feel free to include it in the comments down below. Now, because I'm sure at least a few of you are going to bring this up in the comments below, uh, cannon weapons, that's weapons from the shows and movies that still aren't in Star Trek Online yet, I didn't bring those up for a reason, because this video was just talking about items from other games. That said, while doing research for this video, it really did a good job of highlighting just how many uh, cannon weapons for the ground aren't in Star Trek Online yet, so I guess we're getting a part four for this series. Anyway, like I said, comment down below what you'd like to see in Stow. Uh, while you're down there, be sure to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, hit that join button to become a member or the super thanks button or find that merch store link in the description. Either way, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu and I will see you guys next time.